Hello, my name is Julie Collins, and I am the Product Manager for the Illumina Genome Network here at Illumina. The Illumina Genome Network, or the IGN, is the part of Illumina's business that offers whole human genome sequencing as a service. As part of our whole genome sequencing offering, we also offer human phasing, which uncovers a layer of complexity from human genomes. In this short presentation, we will provide an overview of what phasing is and why it's important in human genome studies. So what does phasing mean? Human genomes are diploid, with half the homologous chromosomes being derived from each parent. Where variants occur on each chromosome can significantly impact the expression and regulation of genes. To date, the most cost-effective and efficient way of producing whole human sequence data has been by targeting short fragments and producing short read sequence data, aligning those to a reference genome, and then comparing the genome in question to the reference genome to identify heterozygous variants or homozygous variants that differ from the reference. Phasing refers to the separation of a consensus sequence into individual sequence strands to identify which variants occur together or in phase. In this diagram here, we show a homologous segment from two haploid chromosomes shown on the left, one originating from the maternal chromosome and the other from the paternal chromosome. If this gene segment was to be sequenced using only short read data, the output sequence would be unphased and represented as a consensus sequence shown on the top right. In this example, let's assume that this segment is part of a functional gene. Suppose then, here, that there are two putatively causal deleterious mutations within this functional gene, shown in red, that have not been previously characterized. Without knowing the phase of the gene, we don't know if two mutations occur in one gene, which would disrupt the function of one copy of the gene, leaving the other functional, or if the two mutations are split between the two genes, leading to a total loss of function. By phasing the gene and separating the consensus strand into two separate identifiable sequences, we can see that the mutations are contained on separate strands. There are many examples where phasing provides valuable information and why molecular phasing, or phasing directly from sequence data, is important. I'll briefly discuss a couple here, but for a more comprehensive review of why phasing is important, I'll point you to this reference published in Nature Reviews Genetics in 2011. In the previous slide, we described a situation whereby phasing can help understand whether two heterozygous variants in a gene occur together in one copy of a gene or one in each of two copies of a gene. This is referred to as compound heterozygote. Phasing can also be helpful in understanding allele-specific expression. If one variant occurs in a regulatory region and another in the coding region under regulation by that region, it's important to know the interaction between those variants and whether they are occurring in cis on the same chromosome or in trans on opposing strands. Presently, one widely used approach to phasing is using frequency data from many individuals in a population and statistically inferring the probability that variants occur together in tandem. This is an indirect method of phasing and may not truly represent what is happening in your genome of interest. Phasing using molecular methods directly from sequence data eliminates the need to rely solely on statistical inference. Another method of phasing is to do sequencing on three individuals in a trio, both parents and their offspring, and analyzing the trio together to determine which variants in an individual were likely derived from which parental chromosome. However, there are limitations to phasing via trio sequencing. First of all, both parents must be available to be sequenced. Second, de novo mutations, by definition, are not represented in the parents. And so, in cases of compound heterozygotes with de novo mutations, it's not possible to delineate the phasing based on trio sequencing. There's also expense associated with doing three genomes. It is still very valuable in some circumstances to do independent phasing in tandem with phasing via trio sequencing. Doing individual sequencing alone without phasing, we get a consensus with a list of variants. This is an appropriate approach when screening for known causal variants. Phasing using trios, where each individual of the trio is sequenced and analyzed together, it is possible to infer quite a bit of phase information, but we will still not be able to phase de novo mutations in the offspring. This can be a reasonable approach in pedigree studies to identify the location of disease-causing variants. Next, using the approach of sequencing and phasing in an individual, we can then identify which variants occurred together in blocks and the chromosomal origin of compound heterozygotes. This is a great approach to use in population genetic studies to understand evolutionary history of populations and also to identify potential causal variants where parents are not available. 
Finally, the greatest amount of information can be obtained when trio sequencing is performed along with individual sequencing, as we can then identify de novo mutations in the offspring and assign all heritable variants to specific parental chromosomes, identifying whether variants were inherited from mom or dad. When whole genome sequencing projects are submitted to the IGN for phasing, the samples go through the following workflow. On the left is our standard whole genome sequencing workflow for genomes with greater than 30x average coverage, where one of the deliverables is a variant containing VCF file. Shown on the right here is the phasing-specific workflow, which begins by processing one microgram of DNA input with the phasing library prep, then using chart, paired, and sequencing to generate one lane of raw sequence data. The raw data and the VCF file are then ported into Illumina's proprietary phasing algorithm, and variants are assigned in phase. The final output is a phased VCF file for further downstream analysis and visualization. Thanks for listening, and we look forward to working with you on your whole genome sequencing projects.